hi guys welcome back to ferris tutorials in today's episode we'll be looking at a particular macronutrient now this particular macronutrient ends with the letter n can you guess what it is i know you know what it is we'll be looking at proteins in the diet and this is a part one of a part two series stay tuned food nutrition and health section two nutrition and health and we're looking at content four which is entitled proteins in the diet and this is part one now let us look at our focus points now in today's session we'll be looking at the chemical composition of protein and these include the importance of nitrogen the protein molecule and its constituents amino acids where we'll explore the essential and non-essential amino acids we'll also look at the biological value of proteins where we'll look at high the low and also what are complementary proteins let's go now let us look at the chemical composition of protein now based on what you're seeing displayed on your screen based on these diagrams can you tell uh the chemical elements based on those letters can you tell the chemical elements that makes a protein think about it and you also see the image above where we have it seems as if it's a links right we have some links there going around now let us see if what you are thinking about was indeed accurate now there are many different proteins and they are all complex molecules which contains the following elements oxygen hydrogen carbon nitrogen and sometimes sulfur and phosphorus good now let us look at the importance of nitrogen why do you think nitrogen is important in proteins now nitrogen is a naturally occurring element that is essential for growth and reproduction in both plants and animals nitrogen is a naturally occurring element that is essential for growth and production in both plants and animals right and that is the importance of nitrogen in proteins additionally our body needs nitrogen to make proteins in our muscles skins blood hair our nails and also dna all right now let us look at the protein molecule and its constitu constituents now the protein molecules are made up of small units joined together like links in a chain these units are called you got it right amino acids now there are two types of amino acids we have essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids now why is it that you think we label them as some being essential and some being non-essential can you tell why let us see if what you're thinking is correct now proteins are made up of amino acids joined together by peptide linkages there are 20 amino acids of these 20 amino acids our bodies have the capability of making 11 of them therefore nine amino acids are called essential and they are called essential because our bodies cannot make them good so amino acids are labeled essential because our body our body needs it but our body cannot make them right therefore they must be eaten in food now let us continue to look at the biological value of proteins so if you were supposed to coin a definition of biological value of proteins what do you think are we talking about if you said the measure of protein quality you are correct 
right? Now we're going to look at the high, the low, and also what are complementary proteins, good? Now, high biological value versus low biological value. Now, biological value is the measure of the protein quality. It defines the extent to which protein absorbed will be utilized by the body. Now, proteins of high biological value contains all the essential amino acids in the right proportion. And what did we say are essential amino acids? Those proteins that are needed by our body, but what? Our body is incapable of making them, right? And that is why they are called essential. And based on what you're seeing here on your screen, you notice that essential amino acid sources come from where? Which part of the six food group? Right, awesome. So it comes from food from animals. Now, proteins of low biological value lack one or more of the essential amino acids. We still get protein from legumes, but the quality that we get from legumes is not as high or is not as best. The quality is not as great as of that we would get from food from animals. Therefore, proteins of high biological value are from the food from animal source, while Proteins of low biological value are from the legumes and not uh, food groups. But guess what, guys? There is an exception to this rule. Do you know what it is? Let's figure it out. All right. So the exception. What's the exception? Can you tell what is on your screen? So we have image here of cow feet and also soybeans. Now, if we have a picture here of coffee, which group does the co would the coffee come from? Awesome. Yes, food from animals. Well, soybeans would come from? Very good. The plant source, which is from the food group legumes. Now, let us look at what this exception is talking about. Now, proteins from HBV, meaning high biological value, are usually of animal origin and often more expensive than others no exception to this are soybeans which has a hbv protein good so soybeans from the plant source has hbv proteins meaning proteins of high biological value whereas gelatin from the animal source is of LBV. So back to our rules, what did we say? We say HBV proteins are from the animal source, which are high biological value proteins, and low biological proteins, which are LBV, are normally from the plant source. But the exception is soybeans from the plant source is of high biological value while gelatin which is found in uh animal source such as pig feed uh maybe the skin of the pig or cow skin right those are of low biological value right and therefore that is why oftentimes when these items are, are cooked when cow feet or pig trotters are cooked you notice that beans are added to it so two low biological value proteins will provide us with what? The essential amino acids that we need because they complement each other. All right. Now let us move on. So let us look some more on complementary proteins. Now plant protein sources are considered complementary when they are eaten together in order to make up the nine essential amino acids. Remember, amino acids are the ones that cannot be made by our bodies, so we need to get them from the food sources. Good? Now, each food may not have all the essential amino acids, but when they are eaten together, they do. Good? And the foods that doesn't have all the essential amino acids are considered, they have a low protein quality 
Therefore, they are classified as low biological value proteins. All right, let us proceed. Now, an example is, we're looking at complementary proteins. An example is stewed peas and broad beans. Now, separately, peas is an incomplete protein. So are broad beans. However, when peas and beans together are, are combined, they do contain all the essential amino acids. So if a person eats only peas and never a complementary food like beans, that person can develop a severe protein deficiency, right? Even if they eat all the peas on the planet. So we have to combine both together so that they can complement each other so that we may have essential, we may get high biological value proteins when they are combined. So two complementary proteins or two incomplete proteins when they are combined together, they complement each other and then we'll get a better quality protein. All right. Now, checkpoint. What are the building blocks of protein? State the importance of nitrogen in proteins. Differentiate between the two types of proteins. Define the phrase biological value of proteins. And finally, what are complementary proteins? And give an example. You're awesome. You've made it to the end of the video. Now, don't forget to stay tuned for part two of proteins in a diet. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share with persons who you know will find this information useful. Thank you for making it Ferris Tutorials.